Hi, welcome to the breadboard. Um, previous video we were looking at a Canon i9900 printer to see if it was repairable. Uh, check the voltages, uh, check the boards and the all the connecting cabling and things to see if there's anything untoward. What it was doing was reporting a uh, 5 amber light followed by a green repeating cycle on the LED front panel. So looking up in the um, help guide what this means is that the head is either died uh, has failed or the logic board has failed now I've had a look at the head physically and I can't see anything wrong with it um, clean the connections and things like that put it back in it was working perfectly one day turned it off turned it back on again the next day to use it again and it wouldn't print it case came up with this error looking online uh, on the various forums that deal with this uh, it could be the head or it could be the logic board Based on the part price of replacement parts for the head and or logic board with no guarantees of success and the fact that this is an, a, a long obsolete printer, I've decided that I'm going to scrap the printer and I'm going to salvage parts out of it because you know normally you'll just throw this in the recycle or something like that but uh, it's got some really cool things in it like stepper motors, um, sensors, it's got an optical encoder, over at the end it's got a strip optical encoder I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything with that that runs along with the head uh, the main logic board itself aside from a few inductors and maybe a couple of stand-up USB connectors really doesn't have much of any use on it without getting out you know and spending a lot of time desoldering um, you know stepper motor control chips and things like that but um, certainly there might be a few things as I said like the inductors and stuff that may be useful some of the cabling may be useful um, the ribbon cables and stuff like that a bunch of ferrite cores uh, and things let me just take the camera off of the um, tripod and I'll give you a quick tour around of what we hope to be able to scrounge out of this and we might even find more as we start digging in okay just starting at one end of the printer what we're looking at here is um, we've got an optical encoder connected to a standard motor this has just got two wires going to it so it's either going in forward or reverse direction these four here are going to uh, what is probably an optical sensor down here that um, you just put a bit of light on extra light so you can see better so there's an optical sensor here which goes over this wheel this is just a little plastic wheel connected to the end of this we've got some pulley mechanisms th and things that could also be useful um, just for trying out some motion control stuff anyway this would be nice as a probably have a look at how it works hook it up to a scope and things if I can pull this out as a single unit I may well be able to a lot of the mechanics is probably not very useful the power supply here has got 3.3 volts 20 volts and 27 volts the 20 volts is um, software controlled and the 27 volts is there all the time you've got about 600 milliamps on the 27 volts and 1.6 amps on the 20 volts so it might be good for maybe an LED uh, driver power supply or something like that 3.3 volts to drive a uh, Arduino Uno or a launch pad or something and the other supply for the uh, LEDs or you know so there's probably a good use for that um, going down to the other end of the printer we've got um, another motor here um, this one I think is, is the one that drives the head to and fro and what it, we have if I just flip it up is this is an optical um, strip it's a little um, there's a whole bunch of slots in it in the gray and clear uh, black and clear black and clear so somewhere probably in the head is an optical sensor that can read this so maybe we'll see if we can have a little play with that uh, not much use down here we've got a little uh, probably a little bit of a vacuum pump mechanism or something here that would suck um, through the heads to clear them normally um, so there might be something in there that we can scrounge we have a full-blown stepper motor right here uh, which would be useful for some projects and things uh, a bunch more gearing and stuff which may or may not be useful I don't know yet so yeah there's a few things on here that might be useful and uh, we'll just start stripping this down now so I can get rid of all the plastic crap oh there's this thing I'm not sure this is probably to do with paper sensing here it's probably got an optical um, encoder in it it's not an optical encoder but an optical sensor reflective right here um, this just sits over the paper so I wouldn't be surprised if it has something um, in there worth having a look at what else there's another optical switch here slotted slotted optical switch 
So the first thing that's obviously going to be useful is this power supply. Uh, so let's just have a look inside here. There are these um, special screws with the little notches in, so they're not so easy to get a hold of. Let me just uh, undo that and get back to you. Okay, it's got the two screws out. Let's see what's inside this thing. There we go. So that's not too bad. Looks like it's fairly well laid out. We've got the power connector here. So has that got a designation? Yep, looks like a little inline fuse here. Um, come straight in. We've got uh, input um, suppression. We've got inductive filter. A nice big 200 volt, 2700. Uh, sorry, 270 microfarad capacitor. So this won't work on um, 220 volts. So if I look at the outside, it's probably marked as uh, 110 only. Uh, input 100 volts. Yep. That's all it can take is 100 volts. So you won't be able to use this anywhere else except North America, which is fine because that's where I am. Um, but the power supply looks actually quite nice. Looks like it's fairly well put together. Huge isolation between what this side here is probably going to be the high voltage side because you rectify, typically you would rectify the mains, smooth it out. Um, so you've got the mains rectification diodes just here. And get that in view. So what we have is we've got the mains coming in here, come onto the board, um, surge suppression, inductive um, inline choke, you've got mains rectification, and then you've got the smoothing cap, and that provides um, all of the power to be then sent through this uh, coil, which is in, in a, as a pulse, it's a net more of an energy transfer than anything else. Um, you've got, and then you've probably got some optocoupler somewhere for some feedback. Um, I can't see it right now, but it may be, I guarantee it will be there somewhere to give you some, unless it, oh, there it is. I'm sitting beside that MOV. So we've got a little opto isolator there, which will be providing some kind of feedback onto the control side of things. All you've got here on, by the look of it, is a, um, switch, it's probably a MOSFET for switch for pulsing into here, and it looks like most of the control is actually on this side of the power supply. So we've got the uh, switching regulator here, a uh, couple of fuses on the output, um, another choke or inductive for, for one of the supply rails, and a uh, bunch of passives and transistors and things like that, and a big Schottky diode here for the um, switch mode output. So all pretty standard stuff and a nice little connector on the end and I've got a cable for that. So this will make a nice um, power supply for some other project. Okay, so let's start stripping some things out here. I guess the first thing to do is get cables out the way. Uh, if, uh, the one I want to keep, of course, right off the bat is this power supply one because that will work nicely with the power supply board I've got and it's already got plenty of length of cable on it. So it will be very useful. So I've got this cable that goes to the stepper motor that I can see here. Just undoing the cable off of these little mounts. That goes to this stepper here. But there's another cable here which also must go to another stepper motor because it's the same kind and it's, there's two stepper motor controllers on the board. I can't see it right now. It's probably buried under here somewhere, um, but it's definitely there. So uh, we'll find it as we start digging in, I guess. Anyway, I'll uh, dig some more and keep you updated. So it just looks like a few screws and we're able to remove this entire assembly out of the printer, which is nice and easy. So it's got the one stepper motor on the 
end of it right there. This whole assembly's now come out, which is great. Let me just zoom that out a little bit. So this whole assembly just came out in one unit, which is nice. And that's one of the steppers we want down here. So there's not much use on other bits and pieces on here. A lot of plastic and springs, which would be good to keep. Maybe a few of the gear pieces might be worthwhile trying to salvage, but uh, I don't think there's too much usable here. Anyway, let's keep going. So at the back, there was just, uh, I guess we've got a bunch of different springs. And like I say, because I'm doing a bunch of 3D projects, 3D printing projects and things, going to eventually be making a whole bunch of different things, then sometimes having some springs and things to help with that might be useful. So starting a little collection, uh, various types of springs, uh, a couple of, I got the uh, stuff motor out and I just kept the gears that came with it for the moment. Might be useful, probably may not be. Uh, it's got one little gear tooth motor here with a uh, bigger gear down on here, but it is a stepper motor, so I'm sure we'll find a use for that. Okay, managed to pry one end off. So that rod will just, I think, slide out. It's ground steel. I don't know whether it's going to be any good for anything. Uh, maybe some model. Just use it as a bearing or something like that. Could be handy. Anyway, let's put that aside and keep on trucking. Okay, so we got a little bit deeper now. We've got a metal tray here with some machine screws in, and these look like actually some screws that I might need for another project. Um, we've got another what looks like um, sensor down here. I'll have a closer look a little bit later. Not sure what kind it is. Looks like it's optical or reflective or something. Um, was sitting in there. And um, we've got that motor here. We still haven't got to that other stepper motor yet down here somewhere. Uh, more mechanical stuff. So let's just uh, pull a few more things out and I'll get back to you. So I pulled the plate off the front of the head housing so we can see a bit better. Here's the ribbon cables. There's three of them that come in to this. And then we've got these um, little flexible brass, or sorry, not brass, but flexible metal connectors that the head pushes onto. And this all interfaces here. And all these cables look like they're interfaced pretty good. So I'm just going to pull this board out now. Got things in the way at the moment, so I'll have to just give me a second. So if you remember, I mentioned that there was this um, optical strip that is all the way across the front of the printer. It actually goes in between this little sensor here. So I'm going to have to pull it out to pull the head assembly out because it's in the way. But um, now that I've got it out, we'll probably be able to pull that off and actually use this for something, for some fun. Maybe set it up on an Arduino or something like that so that we can um, see what it does. Anyway, here's the head assembly taken off, and that's the sensor I was talking about. So it goes, the strip feeds in between here and comes out the other side. So as the head moves to and fro, it knows exactly where its position is. 
These are the three uh, connectors that were going around to the back of the board, to the uh, main board, and on the back of here, the only thing we've got are these big caps for smoothing. So I'm going to take those off just to reuse them. They've got some decent sized legs, so they're easy to reuse. There's really nothing else useful on here, except, as I say, um, for that um, opto sensor. So it's probably reading a, like a grayscale or something, so it knows which direction the print head is going in and exactly how far it's gone. So that might be kind of fun, to, as I say, to play with for something on the bench. So we'll keep that for now. And of course this strip we need to keep, so let's just carefully remove this so that it doesn't get in, get lost or in the way. We might actually end up using it on the printer again, like on this bit of chassis. But for now let's just put it out the way. So what we're ending up with here is this piece here is almost like a gantry for a um, controller. See, it just moves the head to and fro. And the nice thing is that that position sensor is um, right there. So I think I'm thinking this could actually we can maybe stiffen up that somehow, maybe with a second rod or something so that it rides smoothly. We could use this for, um, actually there's a metal strip there that keeps this, might be not connected properly, but yeah, here, it's a tensioner. Maybe that's supposed to be holding this in or maybe it does when the, the head was in. So anyway, we can uh, potentially get this thing going and use the motor here along with the feedback to actually play with that strip. So might end up cutting down that board and getting it put back in again. But we won't take this down any further right now just in case because uh, we want to be able to use that. Keeping all those little things like that just because they look kind of interesting to play with. Can't figure out how to get that out yet, so I'm just going to take a few more other things out so if I can find some space. So I just happened to start looking at this to to uh, find the screw holes, and I just noticed that the entire assembly is already now loose. But what I need to be careful of is down here is a whole bunch of this felt is all over the bottom of the printer and it's there to absorb the ink that gets sucked through and it slowly fills up over time. I've taken a whole bunch of it out already which is clean as I say. It's a shame this printer failed because it was relatively unused. Um, over time, it, but it's worked really, really well and it never ever gummed up on the head. So, you know, for the head to fail like it did was a bit of a shame. So anyway, this whole mechanism seems to want to come up and out as the felt. Just tip it up a little bit. As you can see here, it's quite gummy and black. This is probably where it spits the ink, sucks the ink through and spits it out of here. So that could be something worth looking at for a little bit of a vacuum thingy. Um, but it looks like I might be able to get the rest of this plastic off with just a few screws. So I want to get a bag right now and put this felt into it so I don't get it all over the place. So it's confirmed now that I'm right down here, this printer's had a bug in it for a while. 
we just go and look in there and there it is so it's dead but it's had a bug did get yeah, did have a bug so anyway okay so just a few screws on the front here and this whole chass chassis piece at the front should come away so what we've got here is now we have this motor which drives the head to and fro and of course with that little strip that we had before we can actually detect the, how far it's going. There's an opto sensor here, which looks like it's no good to man the beast anymore. So let's pull that out. At least not for the printer anyway. I think it's to do with paper handling. So we'll pop that out. I think what we have left now, this whole bottom plastic piece, of course, is garbage. Got that mechanism that we can play with with the stepper motor here. Sorry, with the servo motor and you know, the pulleys, or we can replace that motor with a stepper even. But I do want to get rid of some of what's here. Well, I guess we found the other stepper motor. It's this one here. It goes right through to the ink handler. So found two screws at the back of this, which looks like it's going to release this entire assembly. So just pulling out the second one now, and there it goes. Yep, good. Now we can pull out this whole inky mess and get it out of the way. So that's that whole assembly there. So we've got a little bit of a vacuum pump coming up to here. And then that's the bed. So we probably end up having to cut some of this down, I think. But we've got a stepper motor. We've got I don't know, a few interesting things in here. Wipe the heads. So this would normally travel when this drops down, this would drop down um, as a single unit and then this could travel over and wipe the heads clean every time. As I say, all covered in crap, so we'll keep some of it but not all of it. Yeah, just looking at this right now, we've got the stepper at one end that drives this little pump module here through some gearing on this side. And then through all the other gearing, of course, we've got another mechanism at this end, which also turns, which will drive this to wipe across the top of where the heads would normally be when they're not seated. Now, of course, we don't need all that stuff, so we might cut that away, but this gearing and everything else, we might find useful for something. So uh, we don't have to be carefully cut away. Anyway, um, we've got also the stepper drive and we've got an opto isolator, so it knows the position of the entire mechanism in its travel. Okay, so finally stripped down. I've got the plastic out of the way. So after all that, what do we end up with? Well, let's start from the one end and work to the other. We got a couple of miscellaneous boards with some buttons and things on. Steel rods, precision ground, different sizes. We got a half decent power supply that definitely can be reused for something else. And we have an enclosure on it as well and a cable. Um, we have the old print head mount which actually has this triple um, it's infrared sensor with two receivers so that it can actually use the tape that runs along the length of the back of this head here so um, that might be something fun to experiment with at some point we have two slotted opto isolators there we go two slotted opto isolators we have three reflective isolators 
out of it. Bunch of miscellaneous gears and things, bunch of rubber buffers and things. Bunch of miscellaneous gears, whole bunch of springs, which would be handy for building some moving systems in the future with 3D printing and everything else. We have a stepper motor with a gear. Uh, we have another stepper motor, which I've left connected here right now because it's got this little pump thing, which is actually, uh, the kind of pump is one that does a rotation and squeezes the pipe as it rotates. Um, and then we have the whole back chassis now of the printer with two motors on it. One that drives this bottom wheel with which has an optical um, disc on it with one slotted up to a sensor on the back here so it knows the rotational uh, how many how, how far it's rotated right rotations and everything else and I don't know what the steps are but we can have a look at that at some point in the future and then we and there's got a motor on the back of that driving this through gearing that's all at that end sorry uh, they're using this little um, solid disc it's actually got a printed on it this very very fine graticules all the way around not sure what the pitch is but it's quite fine and then we got a um, this one which goes all the way through the head um, mount and comes out the other side which is used for the knowing how far the head has gone but it's also connected straight to a um, standard motor so what this works as is a digital feedback loop. So your motor is going forward and backwards for positioning and the microprocessor is reading how many um, pulses have come from the slotted sensor on the um, head as it moves to and fro or on this disc as the um, rod rotates. So um, something worth experimenting in when we start looking at uh, steppers versus servos versus other things. And on the back of here, of course, we've got the big, um, uh, I keep forgetting to zoom out, sorry about that. We have the big motor here, which is driving, which is for driving the head to and, to and fro. And as I said, we've got the one motor at the other end as well. So all in all, it's uh, not a massive hole, but then again, it is just a simple printer. When you actually look at it, once you take away all the plastic, there really isn't much to a printer. You've got your um, your head, of course, with all the um, ink ejectors on it. You've got your logic board, which of course has got quite a lot on it from a computing processing perspective. And then uh, the rest is right in front of you. Not a huge amount, really. But nevertheless, that's what it is. And uh, so we've got a few usable salvage pieces out of here. The rest can go in the recycle. Um, you know, and uh, it, all these pieces are sorted out into my various um, buckets for things to be used for experimentation and stuff in the future. So that's it. Anyway, that's as far down as this is going to get stripped right now. That's all we have. So if you like it, then like it. If you don't, then don't. You don't have to. But uh, anyway, that completes the strip down of this uh, Canon i9900 um, 8 ink cartridge inkjet printer, photo printer. Um, so yeah, it, it pays when you've got old electronics like printers and various other things. And even laser printers actually have even bigger stepper motors. But you can see if you've got an old broken printer or you, can, you know, relatives got one and things like that and they're going to throw it out, uh, give it to a recycle center, then you should, you know, if you want to do some experimenting and things, there are always, um, you know, w almost without fail, there's going to be one or two stepper motors and, and various other things in there that you could pull out and use for your experiments. So uh, definitely worth having a look-see and uh, trying it for yourself. And as I said, you know, it's getting thrown out, so you really can't break it any more than it already is. Um, so, yeah, that's my stash out of this one. And if you get to do your own, it'd be interesting to see what you get. Um, so see you again soon.